Hello everyone, this is the Plate Reader app part 2. In this part, we will complete the project using MVVM and clean architecture patterns. In first video, we just create UIs of screens and some components. If you didn't watch first part yet, I highly recommend you to watch the first part. I made a map of the project so you can grasp the links in the project. Now I'm going to give a general summary, then we will look more detailed one while we are coding the project. We will have three layer, data, domain and presentation. Additionally, we will use dagger hilt in this project, so we need DI module for injections. Let's get started. First, we need camera permission to continue. Let's open the Android Studio, then create a file named permission under the components package. This will be a composable. I'm declaring permission state with camera permission. We will request permission on start, so I'm adding request to on start event. Lastly, let's show the toast message according to permission status. If permission needed, I will show this as a toast message. Finally, call it from main activity. Now we can test it. I'm giving the permission and it's working properly. We can start to add the features of the application. Plate Reader app has three use cases: capture photo, crop photo and scan photo for license plate. Let's start with domain package. We need a repository that plays our use case functions. For example, we need to capture photo via camera API. This function will return string. So we are just declaring the functions. There will be crop photo function for cropping the images. It will take URI as a parameter and it will return URI. There will be a scan photo function, it will take bitmap as a parameter and it will return list of strings because we will take text list of the photo with Google Vision. Now, these functions will return data so we will have to code how they return that. Data layer responsible for return the pure data. We will not manipulate the data in data package. Let's create implementation class. This class implements plate scanner repository. Let's overwrite them. I'm starting with capture photo. We need a image capture and app context. I'm writing them to the constructor. We will inject them later. Also, I need extension function for image capture. It will take executor as a parameter. These two extension basically creates a temp file for captured image and returns it as a file. Functions a little bit off topic that that's why I will not explain it fully. If you want to understand what is happening here, you can read their documentations. These are pretty clear and easy to understand. For example, go through executor class. As you can see, there is clear information about it. There is also explanation with example codes. Capture photo is enough for camera screen. We will implement our functions later. We need strings 
that's why first I'm converting file to Yuri then I'm returning it as a string we can create use case now open capture photo use case in use case package before coding let's look what we have done so far in domain layer we create plate scanner repository interface and in data layer we create plate scanner repository implementation class then we extend implementation class with repository we override repository methods capture photo, crop photo, and scan photo and we implement capture photo function lastly we create our use case which is capture photo use case let's continue to code our use case as a parameter we will give repository be careful we are not giving implementation class directly but how it will know what will these functions do to solve this issue we will use dependency injection open a new file in the i package name app module in here we need object named app module we need a function that returns repository type but actually we will return repository implementation also I'm adding the parameters we need I'm adding singleton and provides annotation for to be sure that this will instantiate only once I need to do this for parameters for example I need image capture and I want to do it singleton that's why I'm adding this function for image capture for Android that means whenever you see type of image capture like here inject it and initiate it only one time we should add two annotation for this object module and install in singleton components mean we are injecting functions for application level so our injections will stay alive until application die for example if we would use view model component our injections would be stay alive until view model die now we can inject as a constructor injection i am using operator function which returns a resource flow resource is basically a class that enable us to return more understandable data it takes generic type it has status data and message in general additionally we need ui text sealed class because if we use get string method to get string from string xml we need context we don't want to use context in use case class that's why we need this UI text class. It enable us to hold strings as their resource ID. We can use them in view model or view with these as string methods. In flow function, first I am emitting loading state, then call the capture photo function from plate scanner repository. If there is no problem, emit success with result. If not, emit error resource with string resource id now let's collect the flow from camera view model first inject constructor with capture photo use case class which we will use here 
and I'm injecting image capture builder. To access image capture from view, create a variable. We will use channel because I need one time event. I mean, I don't want it to work again and again in cases like screen rotations. I'm creating a sealed class for channel events. Now we can create channel. For preview use case, which is related with camera API, we need to observe changes. That's why I'm creating one more mutable state for camera preview use case and its change function. Additionally, we need is loading mutable state for handling loading animation. Now, let's observe our capture photo use case. If it's loading, update loading state with true. If it's success, send success to channel with captured photos string path and update loading state. If it's an error, send error event to channel and update loading state. In view, let's collect channel events. If event success, navigate to convert screen with captured URI path. But if we send it directly like this, program will think it's a navigation path because of the slashes in URI path. Therefore, we will convert our photo path, which is string, to base64. So I'm adding extension function to encode base64 and decode base64. If event is error, print error message with the help of UI text class. For camera provider, let's implement these codes. These are coming from a camera API documentation. We need one more extension function to bind camera to life cycle. Now we can call on preview use case change from view for camera preview. When we click the capture button, we will not navigate it directly. In this button click event, I will just call capture image function with the help of view model. If its state is not loading, it can be enabled. If not, it will disabled. And if it's loading, show the progress inside button. By the way, it's not convert screen, it's scan screen. Let's change navigation names. Lastly, in scan screen, we should decode URI path to show it correctly. Before we test it, we should add write external storage permission because when we take photo, it saves photo as a temp file to device. Now we can test our camera screen. Let me give the permission, press the capture button, and OK, it's working. In the next video, we will code Google Vision and image cropping features. Next video will be the last video in the series. See you in the next video.